Here's the jetty we're talking about. It was built in 1976 in Punganui Bay at the southeastern end of Derville Island. There's a view looking into the bay. I first went to Derville Island in 1961. I camped there with my parents in Cuppy Bay. There I am with my father and my younger brother David and my mother Janet would have taken the photo. Towards the end of the 1960s, my parents bought a block of land adjacent to Punganui Bay and they built a small hut on it. And we enjoyed some times there. And uh, in January 1970, this photo was taken. There's my brother David holding a crayfish, me with a Doberman dog, my sister Sarah, my mother Janet, my father Richard, and my younger brother Jonathan, who now manages the uh, Derville Island property. There we are in full colour on the top of the, the property with the mainland behind us. When we moved to Punganui Bay, there was already a jetty there. Now, this jetty's got an interesting structure on the right, which I believe was used for pit sawing. A log was laid across that frame, and uh, two men would operate a saw with a handle at either end to cut the, the log lengthwise. Hard work. Here's a, another view uh, of the jetty, good one of the wharf shed with the boat slipway behind it with a boat on it. The slipway no longer exists, that was pulled out. And I believe this boat belongs to Ray Connolly. It was called the Alamo, and that's Ray standing on there, I think. He was a good guy. He used to transport people around. And uh, there's the jetty with our, our uh, four-wheel drive, a Montana Fiat tractor there. And in the distance, Romper, our boat, is tied to the end of the jetty. There's a shark we caught from the old jetty. Probably a bit unnecessary to do that, but it's an awful lot of fun when you're a kid catching a shark. The old jetty um, was out of the water at low tide at most tides, so it wasn't much use. Plus it was getting a bit rickety, so we uh, decided to pull it down. And the amazing thing was, when we pulled out the Kanuka piles from the end of the wharf, um, where they were buried in the gravel, the, it was just like new timber, just with fresh bark and fresh sappy looking wood on it. No damage at all, just wonderful. And here's the man behind the new wharf project. This is my father, Richard Coote. Uh, very competent and very determined and persistent. He borrowed a dozer from the Wells brothers, the neighbours, and uh, cleared the road round to where the jetty was going. The dozer got a bit stuck as you can see here, but Graham Wells came round and uh, helped us get it out. And after the road was basically in, it was graded with the uh, Fiat, with, fitted with a back blade that Dad made. Here he is adjusting his blade. He loved doing things like that. He drew up plans for the jetty, although I think in this case these plans were probably redrawn around about the time of the re for the application of the first resource consent about the year 2000. And here's a truck load of timber heading off down to Havelock for the wharf project. And the timber would have come from Charlie Chamberlain's sawmill. Don't have a photo of Charlie. Charlie's a good bloke, but here's his son Barry. He's an equally good bloke enjoys the outdoors. And here's the uh, barge, or a barge very much like the one that delivered the timber into Punganui. This time it's uh, swapping bulldozers and things on the beach. So we started building the jetty, and uh, here's the family on the rock. Um, sister Sarah, brother Jonathan standing on the big rock, David on the pile, me on the little rock, and Dad wading in the water. And at one stage when Dad was wading in the water operating a metal-bodied electric drill, somebody dropped the extension lead connection into the salt water and he got a hang of an electric shock. But he lived to laugh about it. And uh, the feet of those piles are securely bolted to the rock in most cases. Um, big holes drilled in the rock, big bolts grouted into the rock, and then held in place with an angle brace. And here's the finished jetty. Uh, it's got a crane on the end, as you can see. That crane was originally mounted on the rock and we used it for, to lift the piles into place. And then we put the crane back on the jetty and used it for lifting heavy um, loads like fuel drums. But it was a bit hard to maintain. It was in the road and it was a bit of a safety issue, so we just pulled the crane off. The metal for that came from the Ministry of Works, or some of it did, second-hand pipe. And there's um, Romper, our boat. Romper was built by Dick Westrup. There's the jetty. Uh, it withstood quite a bit of weather, never broke. There's always maintenance to do, but the storms never damaged it. Uh, more maintenance here on roads. The slip with a tree falling over the road on the way to the jetty. All seems to be part of the job. 
and in late 2010 we were notified we needed to renew our resource consent for our coastal permit to operate the jetty so consulting with an engineer and inspection was done about what needed to be fixed and we knew a lot of things had to be fixed anyway and we were slowly working at them but remaining at the time were a couple of cross braces this one's rotted off at the base for some unknown reason and um, there's this angle in the walkway which the engineer felt wasn't supported well enough and it probably isn't uh, so he wanted a couple of piles in there and we'll show you those done later and then the handrails um, don't comply with current standards and because a jetty in the, like this doesn't need handrails it was suggested that we operate without them so we remove those handrails there we are we've taken the, the big piles down to Derville and that was a big job and they were heavy but uh, we got it done and we got them lifted into place with determination and cunning bits of rope the big thing was drilling holes through them. Um, you know, we had a, a, a manual brace to operate with, but uh, we were blessed for a short time to have the use of a petrol powered auger drill. And man, that was so nice to use. Now we were very pleased with the condition of the bolts that we pulled out of the structure when we were replacing timber. These would have served many more years. It's very encouraging, but we did replace the bolts. And when we did, we uh, took extra precautions like using plastic sleeving over them um, and using Denso tape and uh, rescue steel, which is just a marvelous compound for protecting the threads against rust. And here's uh, some cross braces there, new cross braces. And there's one a new bolt. The head is wrapped with uh, Denso tape, new bit of timber there. Now when we went to put the new piles at the walkway, we had to remove some rocks out of the way so we could dig a hole. We had a better chance of digging a hole down into the beach below. Jonathan's pulling some rocks out there with a the four-wheel drive tractor. Then we, with a crowbar and a shovel, got a hole down deep enough. And we encased the base of the, the pile with a rich mixture of cement. And that was uh, pretty good. And the top of the pile's checked into the timber there and with the big new galvanized bolt through it, sitting at a good angle very secure. Jonathan's now drilling a hole into the top of the rock using the rock drill, probably the same one that we used to do the original construction with. And um, great rock drill, sits around for ages and starts really easily. There, there's the hole and now we've got a big stainless steel bolt grouted into that hole and um, a cross brace is now bolted to the wharf pile and behind that is another little jack pile holding up the other side of the bend so it's all very secure we renewed uh, the fastenings at the top of the ladder we didn't need to but it was good to pull them out and change them anyway so they're looking good and here's the walkway without the handrail and it wasn't bad to walk on without the handrail and i think we've done the right thing didn't want anybody leaning against a dodgy handrail that's for real the weather wasn't uh, very kind to us, but it was uh, fun to watch the, the great winds blow through. And there's the finished jetty for now. Well, actually, it's an old photo of it, but the, the main work's done. We know we've got ongoing maintenance. We've got materials on hand, and we're used to it, and we're happy to do the work. But with the big hurdles over and done with. Now, we don't always use the jetty when we go down and unload gear. We just generally push the boat up against the beach on a calm day. But the jetty still gets used, and one of the favourite things is fishing. Don't catch a lot of fish from there, but occasionally we come up with something like this squid or this uh, table model cod. And of course we do load and unload gear from the jetty. So that's the Coot Jetty. Best wishes.